Good morning. Are you glad to be in the house of God today? Amen. So I say amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're going to worship today. We're going to have fun with the Lord. God is awesome. We're starting a new series today. We've already gone through Keep It Simple. And you're going to like what we're getting ready to do, I hope. And it's going to be on how many weeks, but we're going to have a good time. And something that's going to help you get through this crazy, crazy time that we live in, I promise you. So let's go ahead and everybody stand. Let's say our, our, our slogan. <laughs> These are the two most important hours of my week. Help me to cherish them. I'm here today to worship, not to be entertained. I'm singing to an audience of one. Except by worship. Oh, oh Lord. Lord, give on a hand clap. Right. Oh, I got it. I mean, if somebody do a second, I'm the one who's holding the button. Okay, ready? Thank you, God, for this new year, this new start, new opportunities, new challenges, new victories. Help me take advantage of them, of those new opportunities. In the name of Jesus, give on another hand clap. Of God is awesome. All the time. All the time. Please mind tell him, God is awesome. All right. I mean, there's one of the really, I really, there's one, a lot of places I like to see. But my favorite place I can think about going is heaven. Amen. 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 God, God has just done so much for us. Just to see him face to face is going to be awesome. But until we do, we know that we've got something down here. Amen. Go <laughs> help me. <laughs> Have a seat.
that's good if you have it. Remember, we said it in there on the back, <coughs> in that, in that uh, offering plate. If you got it, hold your hand up with it in it. If you already put it in, just hold your hand up. Because the most important thing is you. Amen. But hold your hand and say this together. I lift my offering to you. Let it please you, O Lord. This is my seed. I will release my hand. It will never leave my life. You will multiply except my seed. O oh, Lord. Give Lord that hand.
Our lead singer was also today. Where is she? So, I said, 
chapter 50, the Bible tells us the mountains and the hills will burst into song, and the trees of the field will clap their hands. Because when God communes with us, we respond to Him with thanksgiving, we respond to Him with praise, and we respond to Him with worship. So now, let's talk about some differences here. And then we're going to get right into some of the common myths that people, I hear it all the time, I hear them all the time. Okay? Praise and worship. Praise and worship. Now, back sometimes when we're doing do praise and worship, we've done it all our life. We say, we need a couple of praise songs, we need a worship song. A praise song and a worship song. Now, I'm not cutting anybody because I understand, but if we're not careful, we'll think all the worship songs are real slow. And all the praise songs are real, real, real fast. But that's not the truth. Any song can be a praise song, any song can be a worship song. It's got more to do with your attitude versus your aptitude, what you, how you're going to sing this song. So, <clears throat> praise is about God. Worship is to God. I just thought right there. Praise is about God. Worship is to God. Praise is opening up. But worship is entering in. Wow. But in order to enter in, we have to open up. Because when we open up, we actually we start to praise God and things happen. And then we can go into His presence and we can worship Him. So, <clears throat> praise is boldly declaring. The worship is humbly vowing. Yeah. Praise applause what God has done. But worship is honoring Him for who He is. How many times have you got in the car and said, God, I, I don't need a thing today. I don't need a thing. I just want you to know I love you. I want to thank you for what you've done for me. I remember sitting in the cancer ward all those hours, and, and there were times where I just got sick because you know, cancer, cancer uh, ward or cancer tower, it is a tower, and one side is just glass. You can go look out that glass. And I just go sometimes and sit day or night, and I would look out that window and I'd see all those people. <clears throat> and I'd see all the things going on, the airplanes flying by, the buses going by. And I would just say, God, I just thank you because not only do you know what I'm thinking, and you're here to help me and my family, but you're helping all those people down there whether they know it or not. Amen. And it's not even a stress on you. It's not even a strain. I thank you that you love me enough to be there. No matter what. So, so let's talk about praise just one more time. Praise actually is proclaiming. It's, it's declaring things about God. It focuses on His character and it focuses on His acts. It is uh, listen carefully. Oh God, this is this. I got to stand up for this. You want to stand up to get ready to get ready. Praise. Here's where we get confused. Praise is a function of our will, not our emotions. Let that sink in. Praise is a function of our will, not our emotions. Because if we're led by our emotions, our life is going to be up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. If we're led by our emotions, we're going to be up and day, down and We're going to be having a bad day. So we're not going to praise God. We're having a bad day. I've gone to people before and said, you need to praise God, bro. I'm having a bad day. So why don't you praise God? I don't feel like it today. It's not about how we feel. It has got to be in our will. God, I, well, Job didn't feel like it, but Job said, Next time I came from other zoos, next time I'm going to return, and then nothing shall. I curse him, I'm going to return to him with praise. Think about this thing now. We recognize the greatness of God, and when we recognize his greatness, praise just comes freely. All I can think about, I've been thinking about it for a couple weeks because we do have the Emmaus walk coming up. <clears throat> <clears throat> I may have talked about this last week, I don't know, because I've talked so much to so many people, but there's a song that they teach us in the mass. And this song, we sing it when we're, when, when we're going to places, when we're carrying the cross through the, con through, through the woods, and through all the way up to the path to, to, the, to the congregation. But here's the song. Jesus, Jesus, can I tell you how I feel? You have given me your spirit. I love you so. I was walking in the hospital. Y'all want to see who is doing it again? <clears throat> Y'all try it. Y'all sign it. Y'all get ready to fire up. Fire up, ready. Jesus. 
The Bible says that he he uh, actually he's in the credit we're, he he is with us in our praise or he here resides in our praise. And they're trying to think of something to do this in Chinese. And the only thing they can come up with that would translate is this. When we praise God, we build him a throne on which he can sit. <coughs> wow. That's powerful. If we can just learn how to use our mouth in the positive instead of the negative, instead of talking about our problems, talk to our problems, and talk to God. So, so Revelation 4, 10 11 says, The four twenty elders fall down before him that sit on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things with what our pleasure they are and were created. So the purpose of worship is to give him God's presence. Amen? Now, the product of worship. Here's the myth. True worship leaves me feeling pleased. Well, that's not it. I'm glad. I really am. I really am. You think I'm being sarcastic. I bet it makes you, uh, it makes you feel pleased. It makes me feel pleased, but I, I've been worshiping. But the truth of the matter is, <coughs> true worship makes God feel pleased. Wow. That's a big difference. A big, big difference. So, I feel good when I worship God, but the big thing is, God, do you feel, work, feel good when I worship you? The Bible says in Ephesians 5 and 10, and that 5 verse says, and try to learn in your experience what is pleasing to the Lord, that your lives be constant proofs of what is most acceptable to Him. You see, many Christians believe that they are the audience. <coughs> you know, I tell the guys all the time when we're practicing, I say, y'all are not the audience. Y'all are part of us. He's the audience. An audience of one. We're all praising God. There's not entertainment here. We're worshiping God. And last night when I was thinking all about we could do praise and worship, the heart of worship came to me. And I got it and I come in here and I knew we were going to be kind of, we were going to be uh, a lot of little singers today. And it was so, so beautiful. I saw all the women, I heard her singing a lot. I said, Oh, can you come help me sing today? And she green, good and big. She said, I sure will. And I'm going to tell you what, to open up that, we're going to sing it some more over the next few weeks. To open that song up, it was beautiful to hear all of them. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Wasn't it awesome? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, so again, I, I, just, I just feel God was pleased this morning with everything we've done. I really trust God. Is that they're going, wow. Uh, Y'all can come listen over here. Y'all can listen to Edward. And he don't even have YouTube, but he doesn't have Facebook. He's just down here with me. All right. <coughs> in worship, in worship, this to me, the focus is on the activity. It's performance driven. We got the right person singing. You know, uh, I remember, how many remember Michael English? I'm gonna just tell you a little story here about Michael English. Michael English, uh, he was singing Americans and he was, uh, he sang some other places, but with the Gaither vocal band, but he messed up. And when he messed up, he wound up leaving gospel music. And he traveled with the Judds, singing with the Judds. One day, I was in my office on Saturday, working on a message for the next day. We had a couple stand with us because they just moved there and they were trying to find a place to live. And they got a paper. It only come out once a week in this in that big town. And he had that paper. He was looking for places to rent. While I'm in another building, I'm in the church in my office, I hear this voice. And the voice in me said, go tell Michael English. I love you. 
and I accept him. And I still need him to sing for me. Anyway, I still work on the sermon, and I hear it again. Go tell Michael English, I still have a call on this life. I need him. And I kept shaking it off. So finally, we didn't have all the stuff we got now, the cell phones and all this other stuff. And so I get to take a big old, big old Nixon phone book. I start looking through the phone book. I said, Lord, how am I supposed to get a hold of Mike Davis? I, I don't even know where he's at. He's even with the judge. I, I don't know how to get a hold of him. And I kept hearing it over and over and over again. Go tell him I love him. Go tell him that I forgive him. Go tell him that he still has an anointing and he still has a call on his life. And, and I, I couldn't even think. And so I put the sermon down and I go to the house. And the guy just came back and his wife, they're looking for a place to stay. And they set the paper, paper down beside my chair. And I keep hearing this in my head. Go tell Michael, I still have a call in his life. I still love him. I forgive him. And it's about to drive me crazy. And I looked at the paper that that guy just brought me in. And on the paper, there was a Benson scene. Y'all heard of Benson scene? They have those scenes all the time. They had a big amphitheater, little thing. They had a band stand. And the front page said, Michael English to sing tonight in the amphitheater. And my heart's just, ugh. And so I told everybody, my wife, and I told those guys, what boy been telling me all the day, I said, I had no idea he was going to be here. I said, Lord, come and go find him. I thought he was going to bring him to me. He said, what are you waiting for? And so I got in my, got in my car. This is the place to park. The place was packed. I finally made it through the crowd. And I found a group, a guy in one of the groups that I played with for a while. Uh, he was up there. He was up and running the thing. I said, have you seen Michael English? And he said, he just walked off the stage. And I said, well, there you go, Lord. <laughs> and he said, go find him. Tell him I love him. Tell him I have an anointing on his life. I forgive him. So I told the guy, he said, come on. He took, he took grabbed him by the shoulder. And we were running through the crowd. We were running up on the end amphitheater, up on the bandstand. And he carried me to the back. And I was put face to face with Michael English. And I looked at him. And I said, I know you don't know me. I don't know you. But God's been speaking to me all day. And I gave him my car. I said, I'm legitimate. <laughs> I'm a church God preacher in town. And God has told me all day long, He won't even let me rest until I tell you that He still loves you. He forgives you. And he still has a mourning on your life. And Michael Lewis burst into tears. Tears are going down. His handlers see what's going on. And they grab him. And so you got to go, Michael. And they yank him. And he goes into the bus. And I said, I've got a sermon here that talks about God forgiving. Even how to get to gave Peter. You know, after he had done what he did, and I said, but I can't even give it to him. He's in the bus. He's got hammers around him and bodyguards. And Bonnie English, his brother, said, give it to me. And he went through the bus and he came back down and said, he got it. <laughs> I had no idea that Michael Hughes was raised in the church of God. I had no idea that it would have been the church of God and been singing all his life in the church of God. I had no idea about all that was history. And about three weeks later, he comes on TV and says, God's forgiven me, God's restored me, and I thank God for what he's done for me. And he started to sound sin for God again. And was I out of measure? No, I'm pretty sure every place he went, he couldn't get away from him. But you know what? Even when you try to escape the presence of God, God will find you. 
And you know, if you're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time, God's still watching, and God's still waiting, and God still has something for you. But in worship, the focus is not on the activity. The truth is, in worship, the focus is on God. Not performance driven, but driven to performance as a whole different thing. Worship is an inside job. I'm almost through because I'm telling you, I'm going to overdo it. For some reason, my voice is going crazy like the rest of it. Ready? Isaiah 6, 1 through 4 says, And in the year King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Above us stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with twain he covered his face, with twain he covered his feet, with twain he did fly. And one cried to another, said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the most of the Lord moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke. We'll do one more, and then we're going to close down to the next week. One more minute. One more. True worship happens when the music and the message are good. When I was pastor the bath, my choir director sounded just like Janet Pastor. Just like. Her. She was in the singing group. She'd come here on the middle Sundays and she'd lead praise and worship. And she would lead the choir. And she had a voice like you wouldn't believe, but she had an attitude like you wouldn't believe either. And one day, she got upset because a lot of people were not reacting to the one lady reacting and praise and worship the way she thought the Lord should. And she threw her hymnal down. And she marched out of the church. That was the end of her career. And bad. She wouldn't even talk to her. She had not even say anything. She just got in her car and she left. It was months before I saw her again. And I said, Lord, we have such beautiful music and we have such beautiful singing. Who do I get to help? Because I thought it was all in the song and how it was sang. How it was sung. And the Lord told me a certain woman. And I said, okay, God, quick kid. Who can we get to leave the choir? And he gave me her name again. I said, Lord, you heard her sing. I said, she actually sounds like a cat has been thrown under a lawnmower. My brother, she sings, my, my, I'm going. And the Lord kept saying, go ask her. Go ask her. And I said, Lord, honestly, I know you don't joke all the time. I know I think you're joking. I said, no, go call her. Ask her. So I went and asked her. And I said, what's your prayer about something? She said, what? I said, I feel the Lord's asking me to ask you to believe me. I want you to pray about it. She said, yes! I said, well, can you pray about it? I've been praying about it for months! I said, yeah, but I was, she said, I got it! She said, I want to do this. I've been asking God to use me, to use me, to use me. I've been asking God to put me somewhere where I can be used. And I know I can sing, and I'm thinking. <laughs> and she got it the first Sunday. Mm -hmm. And she still sang like she always did. But she turned around to that choir, and she said, let's give God all we got. She didn't do it like this. And she'd do it like this. And then she would, I mean, she struck. And I'm going to tell you what happened. I'd never seen that part like that. And every time she'd get up to sing and leave, and she said, you know why? Because she weren't trying to be, she wasn't trying to show off everybody else. She was just worshiping everyone. And that became the best choir. And every time they got to sing, it was amazing what would happen. And God looked at me, or talking to my spirit, and said, See there? 
It's not in the tower. It's in the treasure of their home. What's what I can do with it? It is very powerful, very, very powerful. So look, the truth is, when we worship the spirit and the truth, that's when things happen. Get your, get your Bible out, John 4. John 4. If I was going to have something today to be our I'd text it be John 4. John 4, verse 21. This is good to verse uh, 19. You got to say amen. Amen. The Lord said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshiped in this mountain, and you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, When a woman believe me, the hour is coming when you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship the you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation of the Jews, but the hour cometh, and now we is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh self to worship, worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Spirit and in truth. It involves your intellect, it involves your emotion. It involves everything within you. When you really worship, it's more than just an outward show. It's something very powerful that happens in you. And as this is happening in you, stuff starts rebuilding. How many of you remember, uh, now it does it by itself, how many remember back in the day when we used to defrag our computers? Mm -hmm. Remember that? You get your computer get all stopped up, get all moving real slow, so you go to defrag, and you sell those little boxes, and you hit D5, and it might take 30 minutes, it might take an hour, it might take two hours, but you watch it. It's kind of like a grocery store, where somebody's going to the grocery store in the daytime at nighttime, somebody goes around to Walmart, they go around to do this. At Walmart, if you go at nighttime, you see all these baskets full of crazy things. They're just arbitrary things, just in the basket, and there's a bunch of baskets up at the front desk. What happens is somebody walks around the store and find things that's not where they belong, and they put it in the basket. Things are out of place, they put it in the basket. That night they take it and push it up and the night shift comes in and they put all that stuff back in its right place. Yep. That's what a deep fried on your computer does. You got all this stuff that's been used and it's all out of place and it's going down your computer and it's stopping it up. So you hit deep fried and now the computer is putting everything back in its place. And it puts everything back in its place down to how it works should be. It blows in the point out, it blows in the cosmetics, it blows in the gene out, it blows in the shoes. And once you start putting everything back together, it cleans up the computer and it can run faster. When you begin to worship, really worship, a deep fragment goes on. All this stuff inside of you is all clogged up because of the week. How things have gone. You're thinking about, well, my mother's in the nursing home or, or this person over here is in the hospital. This person here has got this problem going on. I'm having, a, I'm having a problem with my family member over here. At work, I've got this problem. You've got all this stuff going on. And when you start to worship the Spirit and in truth with His Word and with your whole being, everything starts to be fast. And life changes. That's why it's so important that we worship God. So, Get ready, to get ready. I'm through now just about. I got 15 more days. Bring them up. No, no, no. True worshipers will, will worship the Father in spirit and truth, for they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. So here it is worship the spirit, your attitude. It's beyond surface, it's beyond situation. And worship the truth, the foundation, which is God's word, which is beyond human reasoning and beyond human reaction. I'm getting really close. Man, come on up here. I'm getting ready to play something. I want y'all to pay careful attention on getting ready to show you. Read this with me. I'm going to come up here to read it. The heart of worship is surrender. Worship is not just music. It's not just church 
Oh, Bible reading, or prayer. Worship is everything you do that brings glory to God. It is what you have been created for. It brings God pleasure. Worship is a lifestyle. Get ready. I need worship because without it, I can forget that I have a big God beside me and I live in fear. I can forget His calling and begin to live in the spirit of self preoccupation. I need worship because if I don't have it, I lose the sense of wonder and gratitude. And, and do life is with, and I'm blocked through life with blind or something. I need to worship because without it, my natural tendency is towards self reliance and stubborn independence. <coughs> worship is not coming to God to see what He's going to do. Worship is coming to God. It's going to God coming to you to see what you're going to do. God inhabits the praises of His people. And where He inhabits again, builds a throne. Now he's in control. Worship is forgetting about what's wrong with you and remembering what's right with God. Everybody please stand. Hey. Oh, okay, I got you. I'll tell you keep coming. Speaking about dreams and speaking about Bible English and about us beginning about what's wrong with us and remembering what's right with God. The other night, God started stirring some hearts. It wasn't just one heart. It was multiple hearts in different areas, but it was the same stir. That's so awesome. And it was Sister Barbara. So as we're getting ready to close out in prayer, Sister Barbara comes to me and says, what do I do? God wouldn't leave me alone. I said, well, I don't think you're going to need to come on.
We trust you right now. You've got this, Lord. You've got this. We trust you 100%, God. It's not because of who we are, but it's because of who you are. It's not because of what we may have done. It's what you have done. You have died in our place. You've taken it for us. And ask you right now, Lord, to touch and to anoint in a very, very, very powerful way. Lord, you're powerful. We thank you for everything that you do. Ask you right now, Lord, to bless. Lord, help us get our eyes off what we've done wrong and look at what you've done right. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. We thank you, God. Touch our country. Touch our country. Give our leaders what they need to say what they need to say and how they need to say it. Ask you right now, Lord, to touch those that are sick and to bring healing to their body. And we thank you for it right now. In the name of Jesus, I ask you right now, Father, to touch who needs to be touched in a very powerful way right now. Glory to the Lamb of God. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory! Glory! Come on, buddy!
Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and mercy. We thank you, God, that you're more than enough to meet every need in our life. And Father, we know that. We trust you right now. Touch my brother. Touch his body. Touch his back. We thank you for what you're doing in the name of Jesus. Touch him and his family. We thank you for all that you're doing. And we give you all the glory. And we give you all the honor. And we thank you for it right now. Meeting every need, including the healing of this back. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Lord, glory. Okay, we're going to say the Lord's Prayer, and then we're going to close in prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Wayne to close the prayer. We'll give the Lord's Prayer. Ready? Our Father, who art Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the world. Father God, we thank you for the chance to come back to the house to say that word and hear song of praise, Father. Father, we ask you to be with us in the parking room today, Father, that we go out and sing praise to your holy name, Father. That people know what you've done in our lives, Father, and just give you all the honor and the glory, Father, to bestow upon you, Father, come from our heart. Be with us and keep us, Lord, and bring us back at the next point in time. This is all things I'll always ask in the holy name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 <laughs>